Well, you know, last night the president called off further negotiations for your second civil check, but then today he told Steve Mnuchin to call Nancy Pelosi. So she was very excited. She was very excited Steve was finally calling her back. So, you know, like old times. So she went to the hairstylist in D.C., a new hairstylist, and she went in and said, I need a new hairstyle because um, Steve Mnuchin's calling me once again. We're back on uh, for stimulus, of course. We're keeping it professional. Uh, and the hairdresser looked at Nancy's hair and was like, Nancy, what did you do to your hair? It looks awful. It's just too high. It's just, it's high. it's higher than an AOC pop bill. What is that hair? She said, well, just, you know, do what you got to do. And I will be uh, reading um, some of my propaganda speeches. So <laughs> wake me up when, when you're done. So when the, when the hairdresser was done, she's like, okay, Nancy, I'm done. Nancy looked at the hairstyle. She's like, what did you do to my hair? It's so flat. It's so flat. The hairdresser looked at it and said, I crushed the virus. <laughs> Nancy looked at her and said, hairdresser's going hungry. Hairdresser's going hungry. Hey, good evening, everybody. This is the Evening's Ella Light, and I hope you're good and safe and you're crushing everything around you, especially if you're in the WWE or you're a member of the Speaker of the House. Go to the bottom of the channel and subscribe. Subscribe because we're crushing things left and right tonight. Uh, also, like this video. Uh, this is the channel in which uh, you're tuning in because maybe Kamala Harris is crushing uh, Mike Pence right about now. At the time of this recording, the debate has not begun, but it may be airing at the time in which you're watching this video or perhaps thereafter. So this is a one hour programming block that starts every night at 630 and in the event that you elect to choose the debate, which I guess is a little bit more important than me, uh, then certainly come back and watch the two videos from tonight after the debate. Um, I'll be covering a lot of big breaking details tonight. There are breaking details across the board. First, Nancy and Steve. Second, executive orders. Third, what's going on with Mitch and that Senate? Fourth, incumbents. <laughs> <laughs> out. Uh, fifth, jobs. Jobs, jobs, jobs. And I don't mean Steve. Five, airlines. <laughs> yeah, those people. Six, seventh, bifurcation, my favorite new word of the day. Uh, and eight, reaction. And finally, some of your incredible comments from last night. Let me get to the breaking details. The breaking details are that some viewers are still confused about the situation between Steve and Nancy and <laughs> Donald and Nancy. The president's tweets earlier yesterday in the middle of the afternoon said he was ending negotiations for the second stimulus package bill. He is not ending all hopes for a second stimulus relief that he can do by executive order or other means. And needless to say, he's not calling. Shortly after he said, I don't want Steve Mnuchin to speak to Nancy Pelosi any longer. Then minutes later, the president actually sent tweets directed at Nancy Pelosi. And by today, he instructed Steve Mnuchin to reach out to Nancy Pelosi. So the offices did speak. They did about as much work as Nancy Pelosi usually does, which is about much of nothing. Um, but so I want you to understand the situation. Second, executive orders. Executive orders are still in line. So some viewers were a little confused that no, that the president said yesterday. Some viewers thought the president yesterday said no stimulus checks until after the election. He did not say that. People are, <laughs> I have some viewers in this channel that let, uh, remove verbs here and there. <laughs> it's like the sentence is five words and suddenly the verbs are all gone by the time it's said. No, the president did not say you're not getting stimulus checks before the election. He said he's stopping stimulus negotiations for purpose of legislative. If you do this channel, uh, I thank you for joining me. Um, there's a lot of uh, wonderful viewers on this channel. One viewer said, hey, you never read me on air. <laughs> you know, there's 40,000 comments per day. So Marisol, hello for tuning in tonight. And uh, now I've mentioned you on air. Uh, and also, people were sending me beautiful pictures of the kitties. Um, 
that are tuning in as well. So I really appreciate those. I love I love when people's pets are are watching me because ultimately um, uh, I'm, I'm more <laughs> ultimately they appreciate my hairstyle. All right, uh, getting back to the news. Steve and Nancy are talking, and that ultimately what can happen for executive orders is that the president can default to executive orders. The most incredibly great news, and this is incredibly great news, is that the president in tweets in the last 24 hours and statements made by Cudlow today, Larry Cudlow, yeah, that guy, confirm, confirm my reporting for upwards of three weeks. And it's so hysterical because one of the viewers actually read back my comments, my on-air comments to me in his comments and said, you've been saying that. I'm like, yeah, thank you so much. The president confirmed that there was $300 plus billion for stimulus checks four weeks ago in a tweet, I think it was on a Friday. And I said at that time, the president, that is incredibly incredible because, incredibly incredible, I love that, because uh, the president can send out the stimulus checks. One, the money's not in treasury. Two, the money's in a, a fund for a CARES Act 1 program, which is now expired. So the money's not has to be repurposed. Three, the purpose the president would repurpose it. Four, the president has a constitutional authority to repurpose this. And five, the president can send out the stimulus checks. And six, as I said at that time, 330 would cover the amount of that it costs to do stimulus checks for American adults. At the time, I did the calculation as follows. $1,200 individuals checks, $2,400 married couples checks, uh, dependents checks, 1200 whether adult or minor dependents. Now, I think that the president still would likely do a $500 dependent check. I know. Even if you're adult dependent, I know. But, you know, the difference is in the first stimulus package, if you're on SSDI, SSI, and Social Security and Railroad Benefits, you did not get a check because you're if you were dependent, this time around, you would get a check. Family of five, if you are a mom with four kids or you're a husband and wife with three, you would get a check of $1,200, $1,200 uh, for the husband and wife and then well, if it's the president, it would be uh, $500 for the dependents' checks. Um, this is incredibly great news, but what's in, what's is better news, even on top of that, is that last night and continuing today, the president confirmed that there's $160 billion of, uh, of additional funds that he can allocate and repurpose. Now, I had been reporting it was $200 billion, so we're, so we're somewhat in the same framework. And that's money that should go out for your FPUC or LWA 2.0. This is incredibly great because this confirms my reporting and is consistent along the lines of what Larry Kudlow has been saying for weeks. Larry Kudlow used exactly the word that I use on this channel, repurpose the money. As so so is there's Tune in. Hey, Larry. Uh, <laughs> um, you're killing me, Larry. That's a commercial back in LA times. Uh, the, the repurposing the money means that you would take the money and use it for another purpose. LWA needs to be refunded. It's run out. It's been six weeks. Repurpose LWA. Excuse me. Repurpose the money for another round of LWA. Get it over to FEBA. Let the t states come and apply. And, you know, take out that $100 threshold because viewers absolutely despise it. I do too. And there you go. Next, Mitch Open. <laughs> Is Mitch Open for business? No. This seems to be singularly the most miscalculated, uh, misinformed, and overviewed item in stimulus coverage by broadcast networks and print media in the last 48 hours. It's as though Mitch never said it. And somewhere, sometimes, people who are on the ball, like David Faber on CNBC in the morning at Squawk Box, which is very, very early on the West Coast, he actually said, well, you know, Mitch doesn't want to do much. <laughs> he didn't say Mitch is closed, but that's basically what he was saying. Mitch has closed the Senate. He has closed the Senate, so there is no floor voting for bills. There's uh, hearings, you know, they're going to appear remotely for hearings next week, but that's not floor voting. So I want you to make sure you understand that clearly. And until Mitch opens the Senate for voting on uh, before October 19th, there will be no vote for any bill. Now, um, that does not preclude the president do, do executive order. He does not need Mitch to do executive order. Fourth, incumbent out. <laughs> I think the message is getting very clear. Purple Power is coming up after this broadcast, but boy, I think the message is getting out very clear. If you are going to vote, 
you got the mail-in ballot in the house and you're looking at it now or in the apartment and you're like, ah, uh, I'm Purple Power. I'm looking through it. I'm part, part of that Purple Power community of, of that YouTube channel. I'm going through and I'm like, mm -mm, I'm no incumbent. I don't want any incumbent. You go down the list and there's incumbent. You skip over it and vote for the, uh, the opposer. You don't care if it's a Republican or Democrat. You vote for the opposing person. Uh, fifth, jobs numbers. Oh, boy. I got to tell you. I got to tell you, tomorrow's number is one to really look at. Now, I will fully admit, I do not know to what extent a the Thursday jobs numbers, which days it's tied to. If it's tied to the prior seven days or the prior 14 days, I don't know which day it's tied to. But the, the big hit for that unemployment number is going to be the layoffs of the airlines. And we're talking about, you know, 50 thousand or more people it could be into the hundreds of thousands there's going to be a big hit in the jobs numbers and let's see if it's this week or next week and at that point you would think that the, that the president you know would wake up would simply say hey uh, yeah this number's not good there's a point at which so much bad data is just hitting you and you just can't keep on running away from it last week the jobs numbers which is different tomorrow's numbers tomorrow's jobless numbers last week's jobs numbers which was for the month of september was horrible horrible it was a release on a friday and it was six hundred thousand compared to eight hundred thousand, which the market expected these were new jobs created and these are bad jobs across the board these are you know part-time jobs temporary jobs jobs. These are not jobs that you go to, you retire on. These are just whatever odd jobs you're going to take. And they're expected that new jobs would kind of come in at 880. It came at a 600 something. It was really bad. So another number tomorrow, jobless claims, new jobless claims. Um, it has been the worst run of jobless claims, un new unemployment claims since the Great Depression. And tomorrow we'll see what the number is. It's been in the 800,000 range uh, for about five weeks. And before that, it was over a billion. Uh, it has not improved with the exception of one week. It went up a little bit. Excuse me, it went down a little bit. But then ever since then, it has been flat or starting to increase again. Next, bifurcation. This is perhaps the most important thing that you heard all day on this channel. And I really need, it's important for you to understand what's going on with bifurcation. Bifurcation is basically, um, and this also has to do with KK shaped recovery, which I don't talk about a lot. Bifurcation is why the president may not grasp the situation, why the president may not have done executive orders, why the president may continue to have Mike, to have, um, you know, Mike Pence tonight, presumably, and Larry Kudlow and, and Mark Meadows say how wonderful the economy is. It's called bifurcation. There's two parts of the economy. There's the one part of the economy that does not need stimulus, and there's the other part of the economy that absolutely categorically needs stimulus. The part that doesn't need it is Amazon, Walmart, Target, Home Depot, and Lowe's. <laughs> the other part is everyone else. I mean, it's just, you know, that's basically where we are. So if you're a person on SSDI, SSI, and Social Security and Railroad Benefits, or if you're a single mom that goes to work to put food on the table for your four kids, or you are a retired vet, or you are, um, you know, someone who lost their job. That you are not in the same universe as the people who own share, who own shares, or on the corporate board of Target or Walmart. They're making more money now than they've ever made in their entire lives. They're absolutely making hand over fist. And so what's happened is that the president looks at the president looks at the stock market every morning and he sees that certain companies are doing really well and the stock market's going up and he knows that historically 100% of all incumbent presidents are reelected if the stock market goes up collectively over the month of September October well it didn't go up that didn't go up in September let's see what happens in October and so if the stock market continues to go up ultimately you're going to be lost in his in his in his um attention span Next reaction. The reaction across the board tonight is that uh, retail, shopping, things like that are going to get hit really, really badly very, very quickly. Disaster. A total retail disaster is unfolding before our eyes that is completely unavoidable, says Andy Folk, a senior vice president at Footwear Industry, Fedra. It's not an overstatement to say that pushing any stimulus package until after the election is a disaster and may cause shoe retail collapse, both in terms of crashing sales and retail job loss and shoe stores into holiday seasons.
The pan another quote, the pandemic isn't over and neither is the economic crisis it's created, said uh, NRF President CEO Matt Shea tonight. Another quote, David Basuk, global co-leader of the retail practice at Axon Partners. Many consumers are relying on some level of stimulus, some level of support this holiday season. So this is referring to you. This is not referring to the business. Some consumers need some level of support. Holiday is starting now. It's time for the retailers and need, need consumers to feel confident. There are many, another quote, there's many families still struggling to make ends meet and businesses facing, we need a vaccine to ensure the progress. A lot of shocking developments. What's important for you to understand tonight is that Purple Power needs to have a real clear focus. And the clear focus is very similar to what we've been doing for a while, over for a week. On the left side is we have to push the president for executive orders. And I got to tell you, and I forgot to lead on, it's at the 14 minute mark, so oops, uh, I'll do it in the next video more, is that tonight's debate may be the most important thing for Purple Power. Because some analysts think that if this debate does not reset the campaign for Trump's re-election, that ultimately he's in deep trouble. He's in deep, deep trouble. He's already behind the polls. The last debate was a fiasco. He already has COVID. Um, consumer commerce is down. All the numbers are very, very bad, down across the board. And if tonight's debate is not much better and doesn't give him a, a positive reaction, it's at this point we need to push harder. We need to say, hey, do some executive orders. I mean, ultimately, we're going to be opportunistic, but I don't care. I mean, they haven't helped us, so now is the time to really say, okay, you're really behind the back. Your, your, wall, your, your back is against the wall. It's time to do the stimulus <laughs> packages. I just saw, you know, Mike Pence's delivery. It just wasn't all good. I mean, that's potentially what could happen tonight. Let me go to some of your 1,100 questions from last night. Aline, are they ever going to get the stimulus checks, or are they just going to play off our lives? They're going to play off your lives. Carrie Dodd, this is so beyond ridiculous. Many companies have been in business for years and have went under and more are going to go under. Gwen, what happened to the very generous stimulus checks he claimed he was getting out a few months ago? He lied. Uh, Kasoka, they need a telescope pointing down so they can see what's going on with the American people. Amen. Robert, it's easier to fool people than it is to convince those that have been fooled. Southern Bell, such idiocy. Jasonic, my country is using COVID grant money to balance their budget, not granting it out. Oh, I love that. Um, they're not even trying to balance their budget. They're trying to, you know, give people raises. If you don't recall, over the last few days, I detailed to you that Nancy Pelosi's bill predominantly was to give government officials in the federal government raises. It was not to give you stimulus. She does not want to give you multiple stimulus checks like the problem solvers want to give you. She doesn't want to give you $2,000 checks, which Kamala Harris tonight originally wrote the bill for. She doesn't want to give you um, FPUC retroactive to July. She wants to give it to retroactive to September. Why? I don't... I don't understand. She doesn't want to give you hazard pay. She took that out. Everything is about not giving you money from the Democrats, which is supposed to be a party that spends a lot of money on the American people. I don't know when it became a party spending money on government. It's very weird. Dora, I'm just stressed out. Mona Lisa, Trump just tweeted a bail off of the airlines. Roy, maybe when we see the suicide rate. Heck, give us the names of the, piss, of the pissed off politicians. Lorena, but this economy just doesn't run on big business. Troy, isn't a group of baboons called um, Congress? There you go. Sandy, well, good evening, Purple Power. It's sad our government won't help us. Patricia, I knew they wouldn't have a deal when they started. I think we all knew. Big John, defund Congress. It's time to get those over rich people out of office. It's time for term limits. Michelle, I think he stopped them talking since they're wasting their time. They are upset because they aren't going to be able to take credit for the next stimulus. Here comes his executive order. Well, Purple Power, Executive Order. Purple Power, Executive Order. Get the stimulus checks out, Mr. President. Nancy Pelosi on The View today said, and I detailed it earlier on Afternoon's LA, that the President, all he wants to do is send out stimulus checks with his name on it. He doesn't want to crush the virus. He doesn't want to do anything else for stimulus. Well, if that's the case, Mr. President, send out your checks with your name on it. Send out the checks with your name on it. And while you're doing it, send out a couple extra checks because we would really appreciate it. Go to the front of his channel, subscribe. Subscribe because, you know, it's days like this that we really 
you know, maneuver through a lot of twists and turns. It's confusing and hard to grasp why Wall Street, as I detailed this morning on Morning's Owl Light, categorically believes that a stimulus package is still going to get approved in the next few days. It's unusual. These are educated people. They're very smart. They're very sophisticated. A lot of them have graduate degrees, and they see something that we don't see. Um, and generally, they're correct. So maybe there's some strange thing in the in the universe behind, you know, the White House. I don't know. But we need to continue to push. Push the president for executive orders. Push for seats for stimulus. We're voting out all incumbents. And also push Mitch to reopen the Senate for um, electronic voting. So go to the front of the channel, subscribe. Subscribe because it's the best darn channel there is. And also like this video. Like it a lot. And crush the like button. Uh, coming up next is Purple Power. you got to tune in for that as well. As always, stay informed, stay smiling, and stay up LA for more. Thank you.